In this world, there are two types of numbers, primes and composites. In order to understand them, we must first understand the concept of a divisibility. You probably already know this. It's very simple. A number A is said to be divisible by a number B if and only if A over B is an integer. For example, 4 is divisible by 2 because 4 divided by 2 is an integer. 2. That's divisible. 3 is not divisible by 2 because the result is a fraction, not an integer. So 3, 2 not divisible. Okay, a prime is a number which is only divisible by 1 and itself. A composite is a number that's not prime. Since it's not prime, it must have a factor other than 1 in itself, which means that all composites must have at least one prime factor. Now, composites are pretty boring. Every single even integer other than 2 is going to be a composite because it's going to be divisible by 1 itself and 2 since it's even. Since there's infinitely many even numbers, there's also infinitely many composite numbers. But what about primes? You can't just say uh, odd number is going to be prime. 9 is odd, but it's not prime. It's divisible by 3. So how many primes are there? Whoops. Well, it turns out, circa 300 BC, Euclid considered this problem and proved that there are, in fact, infinitely many primes. And this is a proof by contradiction. That means you start, uh, he starts with a statement and then uses deductive reasoning until there's a contradiction. And since the reasoning is right, that must mean the initial statement is wrong because it led to a contradiction. If the statement was true, it would not lead to a contradiction. But the straight, since it led to a contradiction, it must be false. So the statement he starts out with is suppose there are a finite number of primes. Okay, just suppose. Let's say it's true. We'll label them P1, P2, P3, all the way to PF being the final prime. Okay, so Euclid says, take all of the primes, multiply them together, and add one. And let's call that capital P. Now, since capital P is not part of this list of primes, that must mean it's composite. And since it's composite, it must have a prime factor. Let's let that factor of capital P be P sub n. Some, some prime. We don't know what it is. Okay, so since... Um, P has the prime factor, P sub n, that must mean it's divisible. So P over P sub n is an integer. And this is where the contradiction arises. Substitute the value here for P. And this is supposed to be an integer, if the initial assumption is right break this down, Euclid says, and you're left with some primes divided by another prime, which sure enough will be an integer. But then you also have 1 over p sub n, and there's no way that's an integer. There's a contradiction. That means the initial assumption that there are a finite number of primes is wrong, and there are in fact infinitely many primes. Thanks for watching.